Fox Sports South broadcast lineup got that much deeper with the inclusion of former Braves outfielder Jeff Francoeur. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Deeper, I don't know, but thank you. <laughs> oh, it's deeper. It's deeper. <laughs> Jeff is going to be appearing before select Braves games beginning with Monday, June 5th against the Phillies and other of his former teams. And Jeff, at this point, a little bit more nervous for your MLB debut or the first time you're going to be in a broadcast booth? Probably broadcast booth just because, you know, when I'm up, when I'm out there with Jerome, you know, he looks so good in all the suits <laughs> and everything. I'm going to have a lot to live up to. Yeah, and you also have a number of former teammates that have gone this route. You have Smoltzy and Glavin. You go down the list. Have you reached out to anybody for advice or what's this preparation process like for you? Absolutely. You know, I, I was actually, you know, talking to Randy this morning and we were talking about how, you know, I want to learn. I want to get better at, at this and what I need to do to, to be successful because this is something that I want to do for a long time and kind of be the second half of my career. Yeah. This kind of came up with Tony Romo as he transitions from being a quarterback to being in a broadcast booth for CBS. There's the point of guys that you shared the field with and, and having to learn to be critical of those guys. How are you kind of approaching that end? Because not only so many of these Braves were your former teammates, but across the major, so many of these guys you play with as well. Yeah, I think that's the one thing I'll be able to do is, you know, I know a lot, like, first first games with the Phillies. You know, I know all those guys. I yeah. just played for them three, two years ago. So, but, you know, it's, it's finding a way to be critical, like you said, but at the same time, you know, be respectful as, as a person and their character and the way they go about things. Because, you know, it's the one thing I, I can always say that, you know, I, I never mind if someone's critical of the way I was playing or I need to make this play or that play. It was more than anything, you just didn't want them coming at you, you know, too hard or too much. And, and so I think it's finding a balance. Jeff, you've spoken pretty openly about how you contemplated retirement in 2013. Uh, when you walked away in that prank filled season in 2014, and then I don't you. Know what you're talking about. <laughs> there's quite a few pranks. Uh, and then the way that you kind of had that Inner East tour, you returned to Atlanta. Did you feel like when you walked away from baseball, it was on your own terms instead of where it maybe wouldn't have been in 2013? Absolutely. I, I wasn't, you know, I thought about it a little bit, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not ready to go out this way. And to come back and and play you know the last two years and, and play pretty well and have a chance to go down to Florida last year and uh, you know get a little bit of a postseason run until the last three weeks you know it was a lot of fun it's something that now I look back I'm ready for this transition and it's funny people ask me if I miss it I, I honestly I do not miss it at all uh, nights like last night where the Braves are out till three in the morning <laughs> uh, with the rain delay you know and I'm a, I'm a good solid four hours in in my sleep so <laughs> You know, I, 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 I miss certain things, but I'm looking forward to being around the ballpark and being able to do, um, you know, this and, and bring some insight to the fans. Now, that was the end of the career, and obviously the beginning, and everybody thinks about that SI cover and the natural and yeah. all that. When you walk in SunTrust Park to the Fox Sports South broadcast booth, there's a wall of SI covers, and just beyond the door to the, S, the uh, Fox Sports booth is that cover with you on it. When you see that photo years later, what kind of memories does that bring about that period for you? Well, that was part of the deal, was I had to have that cover up yeah, for yeah. me when I go <laughs> in, just to give me a little extra. Yeah. No, you know, it was, it's unreal. You know, people ask me, you know, the SI jinx, whatever. I Fine, jinx me, but I was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So, you know, I, I, it was something that was so much fun. I was 21, you know, things are coming at you so quick, but I wouldn't trade any of that. You know, it was such a blast to have my family here in Atlanta, to have everybody pulling for you. And, and now, uh, you know, I'll be able to do stuff with Atlanta just in a little different way. I talked to Tim Hudson about this and, and you when I was writing my Braves book, but they kind of had some fun with you, took a bat, Roy, Roy Hobbs on it, made you take batting practice with it. Yeah, th I mean, they had their fun. I'm 21, I gotta yeah. take it, you know? It's, what are you gonna do? You know, at that point I said I would, I would take anything. Uh, you know, to be 21 in the big league. So, you know, we definitely had our fun and, and the guys ribbed us, but, uh, you know, but when you went between the lines and played, they were, you know, pulling for you 100%. In terms of slugging percentage, yours was the fastest start in Major League history, and you're on record, you're 21 years old, uh, you're on record as thinking it's got to be harder than this. Uh, at any time, and Chipper just wrote about this in his book a little bit, like encountering failure and adjusting to it, would that have changed anything if, if you would have gotten off to a slower start? Well, people ask me, you know, what would you change? I think I would change one thing about my career, and it's that I would have listened to TP and some of these guys earlier in my career about honing in your swing, working on different things, but at the same time, you know, they said, hey, we wanted to be careful, you know, you'd hit 29 home runs, you're driving in 109, it's tough to take your aggressiveness away, but I think that was something at that point that I would have liked to know a little more, and, and 
you know, done a better job of, of trying to, you know, fix things that I knew I was going to have to make adjustments on. Yeah, there's a short list of players that can understand what Dansby Swanson's experiencing right now, and you're probably at the top of it. Yeah. Uh, I asked you about this when you came down to spring training, kind of what your advice would be for him, and you said say no to external requests and factors and stuff, but what is that like, uh, being almost, it seems like, an entire city's watching your every move? Well, you know, and I, I, I was he on a few covers this year? I think they did a few <laughs> things for him, Bill Force. But, you know, you, you don't wish that. You wish that they'd let him just come up. But at the same time, you know, he, he's the hot ticket right now. He's, he's young. He's got great flow. He does, know? yeah. I mean, you know, why won't you want him on some of that stuff? But, you know, I, I, I called it. I said he would struggle and he would have to figure things out and look at him now he's slowly working his way out of these things and that's part of what baseball is it's part of being young and i think you know it was great to see them let him battle his way out i mean what good is it going to do send a guy like that to AAA? right you know i mean even if he does well down there for three weeks he's still going to come back to the big leagues wondering can i hit can i be successful so you know i think uh for him he's got a good future ahead now, all due respect to Dansby Swanson, he was not a multi-time, multi-sport Yeah, well, he couldn't uh, play football like I could. Now, you know? obviously, you were committed to Clemson. What was this past winter like for you watching the Tigers claim the national championship? Oh, man, I went to the games. I was there last year when they lost to Bama, and now this year when we got to celebrate and beat Bama. So, you know, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Dabo's unbelievable job up there. I mean, the facilities that they've built, y'all got to get up there sometime and see them if you never have. It's first class so you know it's fun to follow and fun to be a college football fan you know I think people know me know that's probably my favorite sport is college football Tommy Bowden told me your safety wide receiver maybe could have grown into <laughs> linebacker at Clemson do you ever harbor any thoughts of what could have been as a, a, a two-sport athlete at the collegiate level no because after watching those guys up close I'd probably had shoulder damage and I never would have played baseball for more than a year mm -hmm. you know and you look how hard those guys hit and what they do. I would have liked to run down the hill one time in front of 90,000. That's about it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You had Brian yeah. Jordan as a teammate one time. You played both sports, and oh, now a teammate and, again here at Fox. And, and look how big he is <laughs> and how strong he is, and he still took a pounding. Yeah, and all those state titles coming in Gwinnett County with Parkview High School. So we had to ask. We, we asked you when you came in today, what is your opinion of the Gwinnett Braves name change? What, if you have... Uh, an opinion for them, I'm yeah. sure they would take your advice. Well, I'll have to think about the name. I don't know the name, but I do know that I think it's great that they're changing it. I think it's, you know, you look at what minor league baseball has become now, it's the hats, the crazy names, and I think, I think it's cool. I think it adds something, and, you know, you got your Atlanta Braves here, so let the Gwinnett team be something a little bit different, and, you know, I, I live in Gwinnett, so, you know, let us have something to be proud of. Maybe bring the Pelicans back from Myrtle Beach. Yeah, you know, I think we would find some better names. I, th I hope someone comes up with something really good. All right, he is Jeff Francoeur. You can find him on Braves Live beginning June 5th for the game ahead of the Phillies. Do you have a catchphrase? Have you, have you kind of started running through stuff like that when you get into the... I haven't yet. I haven't yet. I, I think i got to get a feel, you know, because, you know... So it'll come saying, naturally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think, I think it'll, I'll figure it out at some point, but... You know, I think my goal is to not wear as much um, hairspray as Nick Green. There you go. Gel. That's a, yeah. That's a, Nick that's comes a, that's on a high strong bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a high bar. <laughs> there you go. All right. You can catch him again June 5th ahead of the game. It's a Phillies on Braves Live. Jeff, so, thanks so much for the time. Thanks.